All right, so what do we have here today? We got a little bit different style video that I've always wanted to do. So let's tear open this box and see what is inside. All right, so I ordered this through Crowd Cow, which allows you to access meats from a variety of small farms across the United States and the world. And what I ordered here today is something really special. It's packed in a lot. You can see they got it packed in here with a bunch of foam for insulation. And they've got lots of dry ice in here too. This is what I'm after right here. This is A5 grade Wagyu beef strip loin. Uh, steak. It's extremely expensive and uh, it might be the most I've paid for a small piece of meat in my entire life. But you can see how deeply marbled it is. And what I want to do today is compare this to backstrap from a mule deer. Now this is a strip loin steak. So it comes from the exact same cut on beef as, it, as a backstrap does on uh, a mule deer. So I'm really curious to see how these two compare. I'm gonna prepare them in very similar ways, but obviously these two animals live very different lives. Uh, mule deer, we harvested here near our house, uh, are browsing on maples and sagebrush and bitterbrush and things like that. Whereas these Wagyu beef are severely pampered their whole lives. They even feed some of them beer every day. So I'll be really curious to see how these two compare. Now I'm gonna put a link to uh, this Crowd Cow site. You can go on there. If you follow that link, you can save you up to 25 bucks on your uh, purchase. So be sure to take advantage of that if you wanna try some of this delicious Wagyu, or if you wanna try and see what other kind of meats they have available. They have tons of grass-fed beef from the United States, American Wagyu, they got chicken, pork, and bison on the way from what I saw on their website. So be sure and check them out. They're a local Northwest company supporting lots of small farms, which is something that I'm totally about. So just wanted to go over some of the cool things that are included in the package. So you can see here's the package with the meat in it. It has the label of the farm it came from in Japan, which is Kagoshima Farms. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, so this is genuine Japanese Wagyu. They even came with a handwritten note from Crowd Cow, which is pretty cool. It says, hi, Tyler. Welcome. We're happy you found Crowd Cow. You're one of the first customers in Brewster to have ordered from C Crowd Cow from Kagoshima Farms to your table. So that's pretty awesome to have a handwritten note. Also has a link to some of their recipes. They also include uh, a little description on how to prepare your Wagyu beef. So tips on defrosting it and pairing suggestions, beer, wine, things like that. And then a little history of Wagyu itself in terms of the genetics, uh, where these different uh, breeds are raised. Talks about the differences between that and Kobe beef. Um, so it's a pretty neat thing. But one of the coolest things here, hopefully we can see that, one of the coolest thing is, if you look down here on the bottom, they have a marbling chart. You can see right here in this gray area, that's the highest grade fat marbling you can get in the United States. Whereas down here is the A5 grade Wagyu that I have uh, that can be measured down here. So you can see it's a quite a bit different. Uh, All right, so I'm very curious to see how these two meats compare to each other. I've always been a huge fan of venison. I love how tender the back straps are. Never been a huge fan of steak, even though I grew up in the Midwest uh, in beef country. I just always found steak to be overly chewy and not very flavorful. But maybe the savoriness and tenderness of, tenderness of the legendary Wagyu beef will help change my mind on that. Time will tell, we'll see how it goes. Let's go find out. Okay, so it's time to do the showdown between Japanese A5 grade Wagyu from Kagoshima Farms versus venison backstrap from a mule deer doe from the Wells Wildlife Area in North Central Washington. So to prepare these, I'm going to just do a little bit of sea salt on each of them. Um, I'm not gonna provide any additional oil or fat for the uh, Wagyu beef, uh, but given that uh, there's substantially less fat in the venison, I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, bacon grease to help 
uh, prevent it from sticking to the pan and burning, and also to provide a little bit of moisture and flavor to that meat. So we'll see how they compare, trying to be minimalist in my approach in terms of preparing these two different types of meat cuts. rest those now on the plate for three or four minutes each. Let's go ahead and get uh, some grease on there for the steaks, for the venison back straps. serve this with some potatoes braised in a soy garlic and honey reduction. I'm going to sprinkle that with a little bit of sesame seed. I'm going to top that off with a sweet and sour seaweed salad. and homemade kimchi. But we're finding the Wagyu to be... So we did the fork test on both, right? We should talk about the fork test. So, the, so we did the fork test. Harder to cut the Wagyu a little bit than the venison back straps. I'm, I'm actually pretty shocked about the fork test. Because I've never eaten sir, um, backstrap this way, and it's so easy to cut through, whereas this is not. I just did that in two little swings, right? Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> it's, it's the fat that's holding it together. Right. Yeah. I'm eating the Wagyu now. It's very fatty, it melts in the mouth. But then you have to chew it longer to really taste it, to really get it down to the point where you can like swallow it. Without choking. Mm hmm For those of us that can't swallow big chunks of food. Whereas the... Backstrap. Or backstrap on the mule deer just comes apart in our mouth. It has lots of complex flavors. It's not just fat. It, because you can chop chop it down a little bit easier with your teeth, you can distribute the flavor across your tongue better, which seems to get more of a savory flavor mm -hmm. versus the fat flavor with the Wagyu. There's a little crispier part of the Wagyu because of the searing, I think, the way mm -hmm. that fat sears. Which on the initial bite kind of is nice, but mm -hmm. it disappears. So I'll say this, mate. First bite on the Wagyu, you feel all the fatty juices. It feels tastes really it's good. Really good. And then, and then you keep chewing. And you keep chewing again more, mm -hmm. and then you realize, I don't know. It's just I like to not feel like I'm gonna choke. Mm-hmm. I feel like when I eat the Wagyu. First bite, it feels like a bite into tuna sushi. Oily. I can't compare this to tuna. A lot of flavor, but then it just stays there. It doesn't like melt away. 
before you keep eating the meat, are you refreshing your palate? I am. With what is this? So we have uh, soy braised potatoes and a garlic honey reduction. And then we have a pickled seaweed salad. Mm. So acids are really good to refresh the palate. And then we have a fermented kimchi. Homemade. Homemade. Everything's homemade. So if you had to choose between Wagyu, A5, strip loin, one of the best cuts, versus mule deer, a doe, mm -hmm. backstrap, what would you rather have on any day? Based on, based on both cost and flavor and texture, I'd still go with the backstrap. Me too. Well, there you have it. Japanese Wagyu. Loses out to venison backstrap. I guess we have one of the greatest meat resources right in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Guess you need to get a deer this year. Hey! Hmm, that even had a crunch a bit. Hey! No! No! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! How many times do you have to say it? Ah! <laughs> Why my plate? You're gonna get the punishment too. <laughs> this is really good. You just gave her Wagyu? Yep. That was like a $2 meal! <laughs> Our chickens eat the best. <laughs>